Number 7. Thousands of years of erosion have turned one tiny edge of Victoria Falls into nature's ultimate infinity pool. It takes a rocky climb and a swim in the Zambezi River to reach what's often referred to as the Devil's Pool. Between September and December, there's a reduced current at this rock barrier, so visitors can swim in relative safety. They can even reach the edge and be treated to a stunning view of the waterfall. It's a heck of an experience, but not one without risk. The rocky edge is all that keeps swimmers from a several hundred foot drop. There have been incidents where people have slipped over the edge and they've either drowned or were fatally injured in the fall. True to its name, the Devil's Pool demands the respect of even the most daring thrill seekers. Would you take a dip in this swimming hole? Number six. Next up is a road that's considered to be one of the most dangerous in the world. Appropriately named the Road of Death, this thing is a treacherous path that connects the Yungas and the La Paz regions of Bolivia. In spite of its infamous reputation, the road still attracts thousands of tourists each year. Steep slopes, narrow lanes, as well as rain and fog make this road highly precarious. Even though guardrails have been installed in recent years, there are still stretches of the road where there is nothing between you and a life-ending tumble. The tiniest slip will be met with a deadly drop. Up to 300 people in one year have lost their lives trying to navigate this path. Adventurous mountain bikers seem to view this road as a fun challenge. Many embark on a quest to conquer the road, which has claimed the lives of at least 18 cyclists. Number 5. El Capitan, a 3,000-foot granite monolith in Yosemite National Park. This thing has been an object of obsession for droves of rock climbers. It's notoriously dangerous and difficult to climb, which has only added to its appeal for the adrenaline junkies. My palms get sweaty just looking at these images. There's so much nope for one picture. Going up this steep granite face is no easy feat, and over 30 climbers have lost their lives attempting to conquer El Capitan. One man, however, achieved what was once thought to be impossible. In June 2017, Alex Honnold completed the first free solo climb of El Cap. In just under four hours, he made his way up this incredibly steep monolith without any protective equipment. This feat earned him praise by his peers, and the climb was documented in the Oscar-winning film Free Solo. It's actually an awesome movie. I totally recommend it if you don't mind having your butt clinched for 90 minutes straight. Number four. Cave diving is one of the world's deadliest sports, both for risk-taking amateurs like you see here and for seasoned divers. Narrow passageways, false exits, and a limited air supply are all factors that make this one of the riskiest pastimes around. Diving below 130 feet will typically induce a state that's called nitrogen narcosis. It's caused by gas pressure, and the sensation is similar to being drunk. It goes without saying that being drunk underwater can lead to some perilous consequences. And the deeper you go, the drunker you get, leading up to hallucinations, manic states, and sometimes death. While there are many dangerous cave diving spots in the world, the Seme San Hole in the Gulf of Thailand comes with one terrifying curveball. And it's not the 280 foot depth or the powerful currents that can drag you down for miles to a watery grave. It's the fact that the cave is a former military dumping ground. And so the seabed is literally littered with unexploded bombs. This gulf has a hole that's more explosive than a customer's at Chipotle. Number three. In Turkmenistan, there's a gas crater that's been burning continuously for nearly five decades. In the 1960s, the former drilling site collapsed into a giant crater after the rig struck a natural gas pocket. To prevent the release of poisonous gases into the nearby towns, engineers decided that the best thing to do was to set the crater on fire. They expected it to die down within a few weeks. 
Instead, the gates of hell, as the crater came to be known, hasn't stopped burning since and is expected to keep doing so for years to come. It's about 98 feet deep and 226 feet wide. Accidentally falling into this crater won't take you to the underworld, but it is a surefire way to suffer an extra crispy death. Number two. Of all the places where you could get stranded, Antarctica's McMurdo Dry Valleys are arguably the worst. This area covers about 1,500 square miles of desert. Mountains surround the valleys and prevent the ice flow from nearby glaciers. That means there's virtually no water. Additionally, winds of up to 200 miles per hour dry up any hint of humidity. So if you don't die from thirst, then the winds will just make you feel like you're trapped in a pinball machine as you get ragdolled through the rocks. It's definitely no five-star experience. In fact, the McMurdo Dry Valleys are so inhospitable that scientists are studying them to understand how life might appear on other planets. Number one. Ethiopia's Erta Ale Volcano is the type of place that's a geologist's dream, but for everyone else, it's a nightmare. It's located in the Afar Depression, one of the hottest areas on the planet. Erta Ale's the site of the longest existing lava lake, which has been around since 1906. Yeah, you heard me right. A lava lake. It's a legit pool of bubbling, scalding hot earth juice that glows fiery red at night. Eruptions and lava flows are so frequent that people living nearby are accustomed to constantly moving out of the way of lava. Getting to the smoking mountain is no walk in the park either. And that's not just because of the rough terrain. In 2012, five tourists were killed and two were taken hostage by the Afar Revolutionary Democratic Unity Front. Fortunately, the hostages were released several months later. 